Welcome back. It's the V Brown Bag Build Day at Pure Storage, and I'm here with Vaughn Stewart. Hey, Alistair, glad to be back. Um, thanks for that, giving me a little bit of airtime. Love the, the build day. Obviously, I don't spend as much time in the lab like Cody and Stacy, so uh, they want to keep my camera time to a minimum. Short sections. Yeah, yeah. But you so, still had to have some time in the lab. Well, yeah, and, and, and uh, for the audience, you know, I was the executive sponsor of the build day because I believe in the program and I believe in helping share technical knowledge with the community. Mm. And so on that, I want to take a little bit of time and elaborate on, on a, a perspective around storage efficiencies and data reduction. Um, I think it's fair to say that data reduction is found in every modern storage array mm. and has uh, been an add-on component to many of the traditional array platforms. Yeah, it's, it's become a required feature rather than a differentiating feature. Right. And, and, and the part of the reason why I want to talk about data reduction a bit here is that we are finding a growing segment of our business is not to storage admins and not to storage teams, right? It's mm -hmm. to the application owners, right? Whether it's a database team or a, you know a virtualization oh. cloud team, mm -hmm. and in many times when we deal with you know those who've historically been to say a vSphere admin or OpenStack, whatever it may be, yeah. you know these folks aren't storage experts, and they hear things like data reduction, and in their head, you know they kind of you know either some deep dive, but most just kind of go ah that's, that's everything's the same. And so what I'd like to do in this small section is not to give you a pitch for pure storage. We, we're going to, our team is going to share with you that we believe we're the greatest data reduction technology suite um, mm -hmm. available. What I want to share with you is that data reduction is not just comprised by the capabilities within the array, mm -hmm. which by the way, we are the best data reducing storage platform on the market. Um, but you need to look at some other constructs. And so one would be the notion of, you know, what's the level of granularity and how many data reduction technologies do you have mm -hmm. within the, the, in the array? And, and, and you know, we've got 512 byte block granularity, multiple forms of compression, right? That's helped give our best results. But also, how is data reduction applied? Is it across the global storage footprint? Is it per data store, DVOL, or, you know, physical disk group? Or whatever the other underlying yeah. construct right. in the array is. Yeah, and all those boundaries, right, they, they work against you to neg negate the, the your results. The smaller scopers, the less, yeah. less commonality you get. But also, what's your hypervisor and storage protocol? They're going upwards rather than, right. than across. So, so VMware, uh, you know, has long had an industry-leading set of capabilities, but one area where they've lagged their competitions and what I mean by competition, I mean Hyper-V or say OpenStack, mm. has been this notion of what's called VM pass-through unmap. And for many of you out there going, what did you just say? <laughs> it's not a marketing term, but VM pass-through unmap. And what that means is for data stored in thin provision virtual disks, you know, obviously the virtual disk can grow and demand. They always grow over time. Yeah, adding data. But, and I've always said they never shrink. The, yeah, they never the, shrink. They, they almost never, it's really hard to make them smaller. Right. And, and some can say, oh, I can, you know, leverage manual tasks or yeah. things that yeah. don't scale like S delete and yes. writing zeros. Unmap is a SCSI based standard uh, within the protocol stack that says if you have a thin provision storage element, when data is deleted, instead of having the file system retain the data, which it traditionally does, mm. thus why, you know, VMDKs keep growing, grow. yeah. actually change the behavior and delete the data and push it down to the underlying storage and, system. And hand the capacity back to the underlying storage. Right. And so actually have your virtual disks act like an accordion, act very dynamically and grow when there's more data and shrink when there's less data. Now, I've been at Pure Storage four years. Prior to that, I worked at another storage company and at that company, we had done a study that suggested that roughly half of the capacity in aged virtual infrastructures is storing deleted data old service pack versions, you know, prior versions of whatever the application data was, because yeah. that's but, how file it, systems work. Everything that had been deleted and, and was never being overwritten until the, the volume filled up for right. the operating system. Right. And, and, you know, by the way, you know, this whole, your data is deleted but still sits in the virtual disk is why we can purchase tools like Undelete. So what we want to show the audience today is uh, the V Brown Bag team has been very gracious to help us set up a little test where we're going to show you what the data reduction looks like on the array, and we're actually going to demonstrate for you vSphere, the new capability in vSphere 6, which is VM pass-through unmap. And we want to show you a virtual disk, delete some data inside of it, show you how that virtual disk is going to shrink. Fair? 
So both the, the operating system releases the blocks, but the blocks are then handed all the way back to the storage array so they can be used to store some other Correct. useful data. Correct. All right. So let's, let's switch our audience's view to our, our console here. And here we are inside of uh, our vSphere web client, and we have our file server here that's, that's, that's highlighted. And that file server here, you see, sits on the volume Pure 1. And as we look in, on the Pure 1 tab, and that's a data store sitting on our, our flash array. It is in our file server. FSO is so one. There it is. There he is. And we're going to take a look at the virtual disk on FSO one. And we'll see a couple of disks, uh, but we're using the the largest one as as holding the, the files that we're going to delete out. Yeah, and, and the the files we're going to delete are just ISO files, right? Yeah, Lies I, I just for... grab them off. I, I use Autolab to deploy the uh, the lab environment here, and I just grab my bunch of ISOs off and dump them onto a share. And so we're going to look at this 21 gig. Yeah, 21 gig boot disk on, on the machine. Now, being that that's on tier one, we've got this as our volume. We are going to take a snapshot, so we just have a point in time to recover. And that's partly to also show the, the data moving around as things are deleted, no spaces. Yeah, this is what happens when the guy who doesn't get in the lab often gets put in the lab. I'm sorry. That guy is me. <laughs> So let's bounce back over here to, to, to our uh, vSphere uh, web client, and more specifically, let's open up the console session on our Ubuntu server. This is our FSI1 machine. Yep. And so, um, sorry here that this is a, a CLI-driven uh, demo here, but you can see here, this is, you know, this is our root file system, and we've got highlighted here a, a directory called Movies. I really should have renamed it to ISOs, but yeah, there right? it is. It's, it's still... 19 gigs of files sitting there in that folder. Yeah, and as you can see here, we have 19 gigs in the movies folder. So if we do a Yeah, no capitals on the ARIA. Sorry, mate. Right, there we go. So that should show that we are we are gone, and if we do another LS, right? Folder's, folder's gone. gone, and if we bounce to the screen here and just hit a refresh in vSphere, we should see that nothing has happened. Oh, now we do a little refresh. And eventually vCenter's going to catch up as blend the stats through again. And at this point, we've just deleted the files. Right. They're, they're still sitting there. But we've, right. they've, essentially, they've just been metadata up in the inode table right. to say this is no longer files. Right. But I could undelete at this point. Yeah. So again, and your audience would say, you just showed me no change. Correct. Because what happens in your, your operating systems, now this is Linux. Linux can automatically unmap, but you have to change your mount for your file systems to include the discard option. Or what most people do is tend to set up a cron job where it executes the FS trim command. And this is similar if you have a Windows uh, 2008 or later operating system where Windows has the disk optimization, the disk optimization task. And, and it batches up unmapped commands as well and executes those by default once a week. Mm -hmm. And that setting can be changed to daily or monthly based on either changing it in your uh, template or more probably mm -hmm. more programmatically change it through a group policy group object. policy yeah okay and then line it up with your policies around how undelete is used inside virtual machines and <laughs> you like it nice and aggressive you like a daily yeah. flush of all of that in, in order to reclaim all that capacity out of the array yeah I, I do think daily is the way to go so we are going to have to manually execute an, an FS trim command here within our Linux host to actually force the passing of of the unmapped commands and again the easiest way is set this up as a cron job you can see here in the, the syntax of the command, we're saying the root volume, which is where we had our movies folder, and V is just a verbose output, so we can see that the uh, FS trim command is executed. So we're kicking this oh, off here. Goes. Okay, 34 and, gigs hey, to look pull back. Comes back. Yeah. 34 gigabytes trimmed out of this, this virtual disk. There'll be a fair bit in there, because I did a, uh, I did a uh, app get update as well, so uh, there'll be a bunch of that, as well as the ISOs being cleaned out. Okay. So we'll come back then to our web client, and we're going to hit hit refresh. Uh, 21 gigs showing there. Oops, I hit refresh in the, in the wrong spot. In the wrong spot. There we go. Yep. 
you know, we should have written down what we started with as the allocated size for yeah, that, right. that disk. <laughs> um, but I'm sure we can add that. Wow, it's it's dropped straight away. We're yeah. down to, what, two gigs? Two gigs. And that'll match to the active disk usage on that volume. That's correct. Uh, inside the guest OS. So it's not disk usage plus undeleted. That's that deleted stuff is all cleaned out now. Yeah. So so again, we're gonna we at Pure are very proud of our data reduction technologies being le industry leading. But I don't want to make this recording about you know tit for tat for vendors. Vendors use different techniques, mm. technologies. They account for it differently, right? Uh, but we all, if we have block-based protocols, have the ability to now enable unmap. And as I showed you, really maybe you know an extreme example, but you should expect somewhere between forty and sixty percent capacity reduction just by turning on unmap. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, and we we only um, deleted explicitly around what was it, nineteen gigs of ISOs. That machine that was built in the last week already had another. 16 gigs of deleted files right. that, that were taking up space that I actually had to migrate onto the array. Right. Um, yeah, but that was redundant space. Yeah, and if you, you look here, we refresh the, the view here on Pure Storage, and we can see how that volume has changed, That's right? That snapshot dropped. went from taking no space at the time it was created, so now that snapshot holds 16, 16 gig. gigs. Now remember, that 16 gig of reduced data, so it's never gonna match the actual logical but, size. Yes. Who doesn't want 16 gig back? But that's if, if we weren't, well, when we clean that snapshot up, we get 16 gig of capacity back. Right. To, uh, to use. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, nice. so bottom line, you know, data reduction technologies are, are found in every system. Mm -hmm. You need to do your homework on, because it's going to really impact your cost of storage. Um, you know, for, for, for those of you watching this who, who think, I don't need all flash, my, my environment does, isn't that performing, is missing out that. The, the delta in the and how well a data reduction technology works mm. can actually make an all flash array actually as cheaper. affordable or more affordable than some than, hybrid than... or something comprised off a of DAS storage. And that's particularly because the performance of all flash is a real enabler for a lot of these data reduction capabilities right. that, that just aren't practical with spinning rust. Right. And then again, so all you have to do is we had to set up one option in vSphere. Yes, right? we did. And then again, Windows 2008 and higher is going to be automatic on a weekly basis, Linux VMs, just set a, add a cron job to do FS so trim. FS trim or change your mount options. Yeah, or change your mount options and let your, let your environment go. No reboots required. But this, uh, then the, the big constraint around this is that it's a SCSI command, so we've got to have underlying SCSI commands being sent to storage. Good point. Yeah, so, so the, the unmap is a, a SCSI uh, capability. Trim is the... Um, the, the ATA equivalent, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. most importantly, what you need to understand is this capability is available for you with Fiber Channel, iSCSI, and Fiber Channel over Ethernet protocols. It's not available for you in NFS or any proprietary. Anything that's not actually passing yeah, SCSI commands. Well, down. proprietary based file systems today. Not to yeah. say that those other protocols can't edit over time, but if you're sitting and thinking about, I'm going to upgrade my VMware environment. Mm -hmm. You know, is it NFS or VMFS or VVols? You know, what you really need to look at today is what's the difference in your functionality? Right. And some of that is operational capability. Mm -hmm. uh, the other part is, is cost. And so, again, if, if you can have uh, a feature that's going to cut your storage footprint in half, maybe you need to reassess some of the Just, protocols you're looking at. Yeah, yeah, be a huge value. Yeah. So with Excellent. that, that was clean, easy, and pain-free. That was nice. Nice. Right. And... Um, yeah, this is the first time I've seen, I was quite excited by it. It's a really cool thing because I've always been teaching in the training courses that thin provision disks are great because they start small, but eventually you have to buy more capacity. You're really just deferring buying capacity. This, the use of the, the unmap here significantly reduces the, that growth and the rate at which you're going to be buying more capacity is going to be much lower. So this is, I find, really cool. Yeah, and I'll share one final comment. Um, now with vSphere 6, and 6.5 having this unmapped capability, it is allowing customers to revisit constructs like cloning environments. Because if you're using software-based cloning, and it's, it's been documented in the past, right, you receive somewhere between a 2.3 and a 2.8 I.O. amplification. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, with a VDI environment, do you take up a lot of capacity? No, but you take a lot of IOPS. A IOPs. lot of transactions, And if, yeah. you're, if you're amplifying your IOPS, right, you're having to buy bigger, more powerful, 
either storage arrays or more mm. compute nodes if you're doing compute based storage. Uh, now you can look at things like Unmap and say, you know what, I can let a data reducing array just make the clones and it yeah. will automatically always keep them thin. So keep I can get out of the whole desktop refresh, bootstorm, and space reclamation process. Right. Nice. So again, getting a little in the weeds there, a little further out with VDI, but there's some basic functionality 101 some that everyone technology. should be looking at turning on. Great. Well, thanks very much, Vaughn. Awesome. And uh, stay tuned for more of the V Brown Bag Build Day at Pure Storage.